So how many of you like drinking? Cool. Uh, how many of you appreciate the age that the drinking age is set at? Anyway, all right. So, um, well, I'm here to propose that the high legal drinking age in the United States leads to negative behaviors with alcohol. Uh, I'm going to prove this through three main points. Uh, those are, my first being, a high drinking age makes alcohol attractive to minors. Secondly, teens still drink alcohol regardless of the law. And thirdly, a lower age creates healthier, long-term drinking habits. So, my first main point. High drinking age makes alcohol attractive to minors. When I'm talking minors here, I'm talking those under the age of 21. So, alcohol is seen, is seen by minors as being a forbidden fruit. Uh, lowering this age would make alcohol less of a taboo. Um, therefore, taking away the forbidden fruit aspect. Um, taking, lowering this age would take away a thrill or that forbidden fruit. Um, this was shown uh, by a study done for the, by the International Center for Alcohol Policies back in 2010. It was also done uh, by a study at Millbury College and uh, the president uh, of Millbury College in Vermont, John McDarrow, posted his studies uh, in a CBS uh, 60 Minutes interview. Um, the lowering the drinking age would make alcohol less of a taboo um, could be done by allowing the consumption in a regulated and controlled environment. Um, this was also shown again by John McDowell, the president of Millbury College in Vermont. Um, and then by another website uh, which is cited uh, quite often, which is called Choose Responsibly, or it's about choosing responsibly when you drink. Um, my second main point, teens drink regardless, still drink regardless of the laws. Uh, according to the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse, underage drinking accounts for 17.5 of the consumer spending of alcohol in the United States, uh, which is 22 or 22.5 billion dollars annually. Uh, this was found, like I said, according to the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse. Um, this, there was a study done back in uh, 2006. Um, Secondly, in 2006 and 2009, there was a study done on uh, people in high uh, for seniors in high school. 72% um, of 12th graders reported drinking alcohol at some point in their lives. Uh, this study was done by uh, three different national organizations, the National Institute of Drug Abuse, the National Institute of Health, and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. My third point, a lower age creates healthier long or a lower drinking age creates healthier long-term drinking habits. Um, one of the large, largest and main concerns when it comes to drinking habits uh, is binge drinking and binge drinking is alcohol abuse. Uh, a 2009 survey showed that in the US there was a higher rate of binge drinking among high school students who reported current alcohol use than there were adults. Um, even in high risk categories, adult binge drinking rose no more than 25.6% of current users in the United States. The high school rate was 41.8. So relatively double the number of high schoolers who were drinking uh, than adults that were drinking were binge drinking and doing alcohol abuse. Uh, this was found by the, a study done by the CDC back in 2009, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Um, Again, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, about 90% of alcohol consumed by those under the age of 21 is consumed in the form of binge drinking. That was a, an approximation study uh, that they did back in 2009 as well. Um, secondly, underneath that, um, lowering the drinking age would create long-term drinking habits. Um, if you reduce the age, you would reduce the abuse in the form of binge drinking. Um, Again, from that chooseresponsibility.org, uh, they state that lowering the drinking age would allow alcohol consumption to be more regulated in an environment with supervision and you know, bars and such. Um, prohibiting the age 18 through 20 group from drinking at supervised and licensed locations causes them to drink in an unsupervised environment such as frat houses, house, uh, house parties, and other environments where binge drinking and other unsafe behavior is commonplace. Uh, this was found, uh, again, by John McDarrell, the former president of Millbury College in Vermont, and then also by uh, 
Dr. David J. Hansen, a sociologist at the State University of New York at Potsdam, who who's been studying alcohol and drinking for more than 40 years. Uh, a lower drinking age would reduce underage drinking driving. Drinking and driving is one of the main arguments presented uh, when it comes to lowering the drinking age. Um, high levels of tra however, high levels of traffic accidents and uh, the fatality rates occur in the first few years of legal driving, regardless of the age. Um, this was found according to uh, Thomas Dean and William Evans, who uh, wrote, a, wrote an article called Behavior Policies in Teen Traffic Safety. Uh, in 2009, the 21 through 24 age group had the highest percent of drivers in fatal crashes with a blood alcohol concentration above 0.8, um, 35% of those in crashes. Um, this was found by Peter Ash and David T. Levy, um, who wrote Young Driver Fatalities, The Roles in Breaking Age and Driving Experiences. Um, increases in the 18 through 20 year old age group would be offset by those in the 21 plus 21 to 24 age group. Um, also a study done by Thomas D., William Evans, Peter Ashey, David T. Levy, um, the National Traffic Highway Safety Administration, uh, they found that countries with the legal drinking age being 18 uh, have a similar or better drunk driving statistic than those in the U.S. Um, and despite that the U.S. establishing the uniform drinking age back in 1984, um, traffic accidents and fatalities decreased in the 80s despite that uh, act going into place. Um, as I said, the drunk driving rates have steadily fallen since 1982. Uh, this was two years before the act was established. Uh, this was five years before the act was enforced, uh, making the drinking age being 21, not 18. Um, this decline has occurred across all age groups and demographic categories. This was found by uh, Drug Driving Statistics, uh, AlcoholAlerts.com. Um, therefore, the age drop cannot reliably be attributed to the raising of the legal age to being 21. Again, to bring everything back together, um, the highly legal drinking age in the United States leads to negative behaviors with alcohol. your outline, and then uh, do you want the court side of the page as well? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, the claim, the proposition is very clear. There's an excellent layout of the secondary points. Uh, I think uh, we understand why there's a controversy here. The signposting, I thought, broke down a little bit in the body of the speech, although uh, I could pick out the first point. The second and the third points, I think, needed to be a little bit sharper. On your second point, you present a whole bunch of data, but I, you don't really explain what it all means. This is the data about underage drinking. And I know that you're trying to make an inference here, but it's not clear what your inference is. On the third point, which is where all the statistical information starts piling up, uh, I think that there's a lot of correlation that's going on here. And sometimes the... Uh, inferences need to be clarified a little bit. By the way, on that first point, uh, the Middlebury College president uh, citing a study, there are several places in the speech where you give these arguments that say that somebody is presenting information and then you paraphrase whatever they're saying. Let's get direct quotes on these things. I think a lot of the studies, for instance, do the same thing. I think you're summarizing what somebody else has said these studies say instead of telling us what the studies say themselves, and I think that's a little bit problematic. So you need to be more careful with the data here. All right, we got to keep moving.